Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Every year, like a multitude of other people, I formulate a New Year's resolution. In my earlier years, my resolutions were specific and very concrete, ranging from the mundane, I'll read a book every week, to the downright challenging, I'll run a sprint triathlon. In recent years, I've shifted the nature of my resolutions to parallel my return to the church, either committing to a contemplative practice or saying yes to any service opportunity God put in my path. Last year, I leapt into new waters and entered into a period of formalized discernment. The question I held for my discernment process was precise. Was I being called to a lay ministry, the diaconate, or even with a gasp, the priesthood? Then my discernment trajectory careened off track. After a series of events involving, involving family and the loss of several friends last year, I felt heartsick and conflicted. I woke up one morning to a clear message, moved back to my birthplace, Lancaster County, the same place I felt an urgent need to leave over 15 years ago. In short order, I made all of the necessary arrangements, and in the final step of my move, my sister and I crossed over into Pennsylvania with my two cats a mere eight weeks ago. Most people, including close friends, expressed shock or dismay at this decision. To be completely honest, I felt the same incredulity at the change I was being called to make. In today's Gospel reading, it is written that Simon called Peter and Andrew immediately dropped their nets to follow Jesus. James and John even left their father, who was fishing with them in their boat. But what drove them to follow Jesus? Were they responding to his early preaching that the kingdom of heaven was near? Was their cho choice preceded by days or months or even years of questioning? Had they been so rooted in their lives that this man Jesus completely derailed their plans? There's the same thunderclap of direction that I had experienced. How had they even adapted to their radically changed lives? My own adjustment has been challenging. Living with my parents for two weeks before my new home was ready could suddenly catapult me back into the past. Roads or towns that were once familiar felt completely foreign. I felt stripped down holding in one hand the deconstructed dreams of my life here in California, the other hand cradling the promise of new beginnings in Pennsylvania. Perhaps these men, called to follow Jesus, held the memory of their former lives in one hand with the promise of the kingdom of heaven of which Jesus was preaching in the other. So what is this kingdom of heaven? Scholars have long debated its meaning and, not surprisingly, have failed to come to a consensus. The early church fathers posited that the kingdom of heaven was a representation of Christ, of the church, or of the hearts and minds of the faithful. Some contemporary theologians believe that the kingdom cannot be dissociated from the church and its community of believers. Others question the kingdom's temporal qualities. Is it accessible in the present or only after death? Or does it follow a trajectory with its inception in the personhood of Jesus only fully disclosed in the future? 
And is there any way to approach this without perpetuating a specific theological agenda? Jim Marion is a lawyer in public policy who left his monastic life to follow a calling as a mystic in the everyday world. His writings have melded recent scientific advancements in our understanding of consciousness with the concept of and the path toward the kingdom of heaven. In his book, Putting on the Mind of Christ, Marion suggests that we move away from a definition of the kingdom of heaven as a concrete place. Rather, the kingdom of heaven is Jesus' way of describing a state contemporary psychologists call non-dual consciousness or unitive consciousness. The definition of non-dual consciousness is a mature state that transcends the dichotomy of I and other, that sees no separation between God and humans, no division between humans and other humans. Marion writes, to put on the mind of Christ is to experience this non-dual consciousness or awareness for ourselves. And once we do put on the mind of Christ, we, like Jesus, will see the kingdom of heaven all around us here and now. We see ourselves and everyone else, no matter who they are, as divine and we will be living in the kingdom of heaven right here on earth. Jesus spoke to this non-dual consciousness when he said, the kingdom of heaven is within you and at hand. It is not later. It is not elsewhere. The kingdom is not associated with a specific set of doctrines a rite of passage, or a physical death. It is an awakening into a new consciousness. When I entered into discernment, I held a specific question in my heart and mind, but I still prayed to remain open to wherever I might be led. Feeling the certainty of my call and the blessings of my move back east did not diminish the sacrifice of leaving my community here. Yes, it seems like my discernment trajectory careened off track. But perhaps that is just what it looks like when God calls each of us up and out of our boats, up and out of our lives, up and out of one community and family for another. And suddenly my recent shift makes sense. I have been thrust into the immediacy of each moment now that the temporal arc of my discernment has changed. It is no longer about a passage into a specific decision but an awakening into a new way of being, of waiting, of listening. I have this opportunity to open my heart and mind to the kingdom of heaven, which is as near to me now as it was to the original disciples. What is this kingdom for you? Where do you see the kingdom of heaven within and around you. I see the kingdom in the eyes of my mother as she joyfully tears up that I am with her on my birthday for the first time in 15 years. As I sit around a table with my family and find the simple joy in each other's presence. But my substantive work has only just begun. How may I recognize the kingdom in those who have hurt me, who have misunderstood me, whose personal, political, and theological choices radically diverge from my own. 
I pray that we may all continue to find the kingdom of heaven, to sense the wholeness and holiness in every life around us, in those we love and in those who anger us, in those we understand and those who confound us. Amen.